Okay, there is something else that's going on, something really big, <laughs> a big change here. And uh, a couple days ago, we just sent emails to the, the leaders of the ministries that we are under at our church that we're leading, doing some leadership stuff to let them know that this Sunday, two days from now, is going to be our last day at our church. We feel like after going through these studies, being the Book of Acts New Testament Church, reading Francis Chan's book, and numerous scriptures in the Bible and our Bible reading have confirmed that he's leading us to do something different. Yes. <laughs> Seeking to line up with that church that Jesus died for, that he set up, that we read about and see in the New Testament. And back when there was a break on Wednesday nights from our Wednesday night services, we started doing uh, our Bible study, watching a message, discussing it, praying, and, and doing our kind of our church service at home. And so we're going to move on with that. We don't know exactly where we're going to be, if he's going to set up the move or um, if we're going to be here for a while longer. We don't really know. We know what we're supposed to do, but we don't know exactly how it's going to look like or where we're going to be. So that's the other big update that's going on right now. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time I hear that, it's that that financial ad that's on Huckabee. <laughs> it's volatile and scary. <laughs> anyway, um, it's not. But um, how do I feel about that? Well, um, I, I feel the confirmation that it's what God wants us to do. It is definitely different walking away from something that you've always known. It's it's the way things have always been. Been there for um, a little over eight years now. And although there are there are um, other people leading in this movement, we're not the only one. But we don't have any mentor right here in our pocket necessarily leading us through that and so Except we for really the word of God. Well, I know, but um I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um at this point we don't um have a fellowship of believers that believe the same way we do at this point. And so I like people. I think the clear picture is is the picture that you had um, of what that feels like. The trap. The tra oh, the trap. Yeah, feeling like God's leading us into this. We see it in His Word. It's being confirmed through other people. Actually, uh, David Platt, who we've been watching a lot of his messages and really. Um, feel like he's a really solid Bible teacher for our, our Wednesday nights. He's all he's also partnering up with Francis Chan again, and next Friday they are going to be uh, doing a a conference that we figured out how we can. It, there, it costs twenty five bucks to go there and see it, but we see saw a way that through Facebook they're allowing you to be able to watch it for free, but. Um, He's partnering up with Francis Chan and one other guy on rethinking church and rethinking mission, which is exactly what Francis Chan is talking about and he's been doing for the last five years, too, and seeing that multiply and grow and everything. So that's going to be interesting. There's just, just so much confirmation. And like I said, through our Bible reading and everything, our regular Bible reading, feeling a lot of confirmation from God in that as well. So we don't know exactly what this is going to look like, like we said, or where we're going to be. But uh, as a video diary, this will be fun to kind of look back at that and go, look, look how uncertain and how we, I mean, we're certain of what we're doing. We're just not certain of what it's going to look like you know, an hour from now, let alone five days from now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's it's 
But that, I guess, you know, that's the walk of faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. And so it's, it's exciting and it's scary at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And which was interesting because I talked to somebody at uh, our Bible study last week at our church and was kind of telling him, you know, that God's leading us into something that's kind of scary. And he says, you know, that's how I always know when it's God leading me into something, if it's scary and it's not something I would necessarily come up with on my own. So it's like, hmm, okay. I didn't, I didn't talk about the details or anything, just felt like God was leading us into something new that seemed kind of scary. Something new. Really new. So here we go. Something else to keep you guys updated on what happens and where God leads us from here. If you were going to write to yourself seven years ago, what would you tell yourself <laughs> now that you're here seven years later? Hang on, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all where I expected we would be or what we were we would be doing. But I mean it's been pretty consistent. I mean with the Christian adventure films calling, it's been pretty consistent videotaping our lives as we seek to live for God and, and what that looks like, what we experience, what he's teaching us, where he's leading us and all that. It's just I really did not n know exactly how that was going to look. This is a pretty big transition. I mean, when in January, when um, I felt like the Lord in our fasting period led us to transition. Seeking Him and for at, revelation. And at first you kept talking about us going through a lot of different transition that he really has been transitioning in it for a while i didn't really see it but now it's like this this is a big transition big transition big trans transition in our theology what we're seeing in the bible what god's telling us and teaching us and and uh when he led us to pray for a revelation of him his word and what he wants us to do in our life boy whew, Definitely that was uh, what he wanted because, man, he's just, through the whole year, it's been a year of revelation and a year of transition. So praise God. We can always trust God. It might be scary. It is exciting when you know you're following and you see, you're looking at his word, making sure you're lining up with his word. It's exciting, but it is scary. But it, it's definitely, I've said it before, it's not a boring life. <laughs> So if you look back to yourself seven years ago, um, would you have done anything different? Are there things that you would have done differently? I don't know. I think the one, one of the pivotal things in my life was, it was before we even knew what Francis Chan was doing, that watched, watched a sermon of his where he said, if... All I had was the Word of God, and you were on a deserted island. What would you come up with? What What would you believe? What would church look like? Uh, that was huge, and that's probably the one thing that I, I, I wish I would have heard to really look and see what I would believe if I just had the Word of God and not going off of what I've been used to, what traditions I'm used to, what the traditions are in our culture, but what, you know, what do I actually see in God's Word and what is He telling us? Was that seven years ago? Like, how long ago was that I, I, that you... No, I don't think it was seven like years ago. fairly recently, but okay, so yeah, but that's one so thing that you wish you would have known then. Probably wish I would have learned that 30 years ago when I first became a Christian. <laughs> That's true. That's true, because when you get so used to doing things a certain way, especially and believing, in our, believing in our age, certain things, and to, um, to just totally like, we've been doing this all wrong. <laughs> or you Yeah, because there's, there's been a lot of things that, you know, I've believed, you know, 
little pieces of scripture that I believed a certain way about them and what they meant. But when you really go into God's word and you look at it in context, what it's talking about, it's like totally something totally different. So, man, is it important for us to be in God's word and not just pick scriptures out and make a theology, but to actually look at the context of that scripture and what is it actually really saying? What does it mean? So that's huge. Hello, Limi. What about you? I think one thing that I'm always wishing I was better at is the don't worry about tomorrow. Stay focused on here and now. Like, I still really struggle. It's hard. I really still struggle. When, like, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting better. I don't, like, I, in the past, you know, when we, when we come to what I think is, like, the cliff and that's it, um, you know, I've really gotten to, like, tears and panic in the past, and now I don't quite get there. But I still don't trust I don't trust like my attitude maybe not my attitude my thoughts don't trust him as much as I want to and and I don't know maybe I'm being unrealistic with myself thinking that I just I think of Jesus and I think he probably was not like his stomach might have been growling when he's talking to the multitudes and he probably didn't think man I could really use a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right now like I where's my next peanut butter and jelly sandwich going to come from I mean he probably can't didn't. wait till these disciples ask me how they're we're going to feed all these people so that I can do this meal. I just I don't know you know I just think that he you know wasn't worried and they're probably Paul you know, wasn't really worried about stuff, and I just, I don't know. I i wish I didn't worry about silly things, no. but they don't seem, I mean, they don't, <laughs> like, for instance, like, you know, Ryder's birthday's coming up next week. Paying and your bills and buying paying, food. Well, and then I think, okay, so those are needs, you know. But then there's, you know, your grandkids, you want to be able to buy them birthday presents, you know, or, or make something. And, and in the greater scheme of things, that's not something to worry about. Like, you, either you can do it or you can't do it. And if you can't do it, then you can't. You know what I mean? But it's things that I would like to do. Yeah. In our, in our humanness, it, it's... You see the concrete, natural things going on around you and seeing how it's going to be taken care of in the spiritual world, how it's going to manifest itself out and happen in the natural world. You can't, we can't see that. So that's where the uh, scary part comes in. I know, and it's like, no matter how many times God has come through, I still think, like, well, what if this is the time he doesn't? Because, really, he's just been gracious to us all these years. Yeah, it's always, every time I come up to it, it's like, well, this situation's different. Because that time, you know, we had that coming in, even though we didn't know it. But this time, we don't see anything, so, I don't know. Anyway. So, Those are our thoughts. Yeah, well... Let you know what happens, what happens next. Talk to you on the next video. God bless.